again, the church never closed. The building closed, but the church, you and I, continue to praise him, continue to worship him. We continue to meet through Zoom in our groups, through basics, through our driving, through our Facebook lives. Let me tell you, God has been so good. He's been so good, and, and it's so good to be back uh, in the house of the Lord. And I'm honored that uh, our lead pastors, uh, Gabby and Petri, are with us today. And you're going to hear from them uh, later on. And we're just so honored of all the hard work that they've done day in and day out to continue to serve the people of God. And we are truly, truly grateful. Amen. You know, a day like today, we celebrate National Day of Pentecost. For those of you who are not familiar with the Day of Pentecost, it is found in the book of Acts. If it had not been for those people, we would not be here doing what we do. We do what we do because they paved the way. Out of about 500, only 120 were obedient enough to God, my God. Sometimes you lose your blessing because you're impatient. Told about 500, go wait, I'm leaving, but I leave with you the counselor. The one who will guide you to all truth. The one who will teach you. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit for what's about to come. You can't do what you're about to do without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And 120 wait impatiently when all, all of a sudden a wind and fire and speaking of tongues overtook them. And from that day on, the rest is history. They conquered the world. The church was born. They met in homes. They shared everything. They prayed. They discipled. And it went all over the world. Amen? And so today we honor the day of Pentecost. And we want to make sure that you understand your roots. Amen? And your history. Amen. Today... I have the honor to close off this amazing series, Kintsuji. How many have been following the series? It's been amazing. And if you haven't got the book, we have a few copies in the back, cash only, cash only. We're going to have it in the back as you wait your way out. We have a few copies of our lead pastor's book, Kintsuji. You want to read that book. Uh, because the book goes more details than, than the teachings, uh, especially, you know me, I'm very comedic. I love the funny stories he shares about his car. He had me in tears. you got to read that story. It's hilarious. So get the book. We only have a few copies. It's been powerful. I only have a few minutes left, so let's, let's go right into If you have a Bible, look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I'm reading it out of the Good News translation because I just love uh, this particular translation for this verse. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The Bible says, Every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise. And he will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. At the time you are put to the test, you will, he will give you the strength not to escape it, but to endure it. And so provide you a way out. So today we want to close Kintsuji part six, which is the miracle. How many know that before the miracle, there's going to be some testing? How many know that before a miracle, there's going to be some pressing? Father God, we thank you for your word. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will bring conviction to all of our hearts. Father, that by the time we leave this facility, we leave this building asking ourselves, what is it that I need to change in my life? so that I can be used in the purpose that you have designed for me. Father, change us. Change us. Change our way of thinking so that we can be purposeful in the assignment that you have for us. Father, I give you all the glory and all the honor for what you have been doing through this church and in this church. 
I give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God say, amen. and amen. You know, the only difference between a diamond and a piece of coal is pressure. The only difference between a diamond and a piece of coal is pressure. We all know that for there to be oil, olives have to be squeezed. How many know that? Everybody wants the olive oil, but you don't know the process it had to go through for you to get that oil. For wine to be produced, grapes have to be pressed. And in order for us to smell the aroma of perfume, flowers have to be crushed. So if you're feeling any pressure in life lately, don't worry. Be encouraged. It's a test. God knows you can handle it. He's just bringing out the best inside of you. He is just setting you up for the miracle. Jesus himself said at one time, you yet don't understand what I'm doing right now, but in due time you will understand it. You're throwing a pity party, you're crying, you're shouting, you're complaining, and God is there looking at you and saying, come on now, calm down, relax, don't you trust me? Aren't you the one that worshiping me and preaching about me? Relax, what's about to come is going to be worth it. You're being pressed, you're being crushed, because something awesome, something great is about to come. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I have been chosen. Aren't you glad you've been chosen? Every single person sitting in this room has been chosen for a purpose. How do we know that? Look what the Bible says, Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 31. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God chose me from the very beginning before he said let there be light he already had your name in his mind he already knew he was going to select you he already knew he chose you for a greater purpose look at your neighbor and tell him i've been chosen i've been chosen i know i don't look like it i know i don't smell like it i know i don't have the temperament right now i know i don't have the perfect gifts right now but trust me when i tell you god chose me i I might not preach like him. I might not think like him. I might not dress like him. I might not have the cause. But trust me, God chose me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not where I am, but I am not where I used to be. I am a progress in where I am getting to where God called. The fact of the matter is he chose me. He chose me. He chose me. I didn't choose myself. He chose me. I didn't want to be used, but he chose me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We're all a work in progress. All of us. He chose me. And this is, this is what we call the progression of transformation in God's hands right here. The progression of transformation in God's hands. First, he foreknew you. He predestined you. He called you. He justified you. Do we have that? There you go. Okay. People need to write this down or take a picture. All right. The progression of transformation. He foreknew you. He predestined you. He called you. He justified you. And he glorified you. We're going to break this down. Now, what is the consequences of this progression? Verse 31, who can be against us? That's the consequences of all five. Who can be against us? Listen, the devil will try everything in his power for you to, 
to get your attention off your God-given purpose. He will throw everything in his powers within your finances, your marriage, your children, your business. He will do everything he can to get you distracted, church. This ain't the time to be distracted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is not the time to be distracted. This is a time to declare God's word over your life, over your family, over your finances, over your children, over your children's children. This is the time to say, if God be for me, who can be against me? I've been called. I've been predestined. I've been justified. I've been glorified. I am going to stand on God's word regardless of what I see, regardless of what I hear, regardless of what I feel. I'm going to stand on the promises of God. I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. Why? Because I've been chosen. There's a miracle on the other side. I'm going to stay in the presser. I'm being pressed. I'm being crushed. But I've got to smell like aroma. I don't smell like it right now. But I'm in the process of being crushed. Of being pressed. I'm about to explode. Be patient with each other. When you look at somebody and say, mm, that's not Christ-like. Remember you were in that situation too. Don't call them hypocrites. Oh, he's a hypocrite. No, no, no. He's a work in progress. He's got some issues, you know, but work in progress. You don't got to be their best friends, but, 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 but don't, 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 don't kick a brother when he's down. We all been there. All of us are in the same problem. We all been called, but some of us are in different levels. Once you're up here, don't criticize the guy who's down here. You've been there. You're already in that level. You should have compassion because you've been already on that phase three. But now you're in phase eight. You're looking back like, like you're better. No, come on, y'all. See, God has promised you greatness. All of us have greatness in us. Now, this doesn't mean that you're not going to be exempt from trouble, from pain. All of us are going to go through trouble. Just because God called you doesn't mean you're not going to go through some stuff. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody's going to go through pain, through struggle. All of us are going to go through it at some point or another. But the promise is, I'm with you. The promise is, I'm with you. You're going through it, but I'm there with you. Look at an example of the, of the box of pencils, right? We got a box of 24 pencils. Let's start with the first one. God foreknew you. He foreknew you. He knew exactly which pencil he was going to, he was going to select. We pick out a pencil. This pencil looks just like all these other pencils in here. They look exactly the same. But they're not the same. You see, God selected this pencil. Whatever God has for you is for you. Whatever God has for you is for you. That's why there's no need for you to be envious or jealous of anybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your business, your ministry, your family. God chose that for you. What you have, he anointed you for that. So there's no reason to be jealous or envious. The pencils were stored next to one looks exactly like them. This pencil I have right here in my hand was uniquely made for me. For me. What I have in my life was designed uniquely for me. What you have was designed uniquely for you. Now understand this. God was aware of this before you existed. He already knew what he had planned for you before you existed. So all of us look the same. But we don't have the same. God has you for some purpose. God has you assigned. But the things that I can do, maybe you can't do. The things that you can accomplish, I can accomplish. Why? Because God didn't call me for that. See, sometimes our frustration comes from trying to be something you've never been called to, to do. 
trying to accomplish a purpose in which God never designed for you. And so you're frustrated and frustrated because you're trying to, you're seeing what other people do. Oh, I can do that. But the question is, did God call you to do that? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we have to understand our calling. Number two, God predestined you. God predestined you. You were chosen to be in the pack. You all came together in a pack. The 120 that were in Pentecost, when they received, they were all together in a pack. But after they received it, they all separated and they did different things. They didn't all do the same exact thing. See, you are part of the body of Christ. All of us are part of the body of Christ. Look at John chapter 10, verses 27 to 30. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them from my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of the Father's hands. He's trying to snatch you. He's trying to bring you down. That's why some of you, you try to walk away from God, but you find yourself coming right back. You want to know why you keep finding yourself coming right back? Because the Spirit of God won't leave you alone. Because something deep down inside your spirit cries out, Abba, Father. Every time you try to walk away, there goes the Holy Spirit reminding you of the greatness of God. Reminding you that you cannot do anything without the power of God. There's something inside of all of us that yearns more of God, more of his presence, more of his power. Satan will try it, but it won't work. You are in the hands of God. You think you left God, but God ain't leave you. He's right there knocking on your door. He's right there letting you know, I love you too much to let you go. I love you just the way you are, but I love you too much to leave you the way you are. And the Holy Spirit keeps banging on your heart, letting you, I love you, I love you. And that's why you got people coming back to church, crying in the altar. Why? Because you just can't leave God. God is something inside of us that just won't leave. You are destined, destined for greatness, destined for a purpose. Each of one of these pencils came in a box. The pencil in a box never chose to be used. These pencils didn't choose to be used. We choose them. You were never asked to be chosen, but God chose you. You, a lot of you don't choose to be used by God. God uses you. A lot of pastors, a lot of the pastors, the majority of pastors will tell you, none of us wanted to do this. Like who in their right mind wants to be a pastor? If you knew, if you knew the calling, the cost of this calling, trust me, you, don't want to, you wouldn't want this. I'm a pastor's kid. Pastor Gabby is a pastor's kid. We've seen how far what they went through. Trust me. We were pastor's kids. We've seen it. We didn't want this. But God called us. And when you have a calling over your life, no matter where you run, ask Jonah. Mm. No matter, you could hide in the biggest fish's belly. Right there, God is going to speak to you. Right there, he'll remind you. No matter where you go. God will remind you, I've called you for such a time as this. And I believe, church, that this is the time that God is calling us. Whenever there is, right now there is crisis in our nation. And we pray for the family of George Floyd and what happened to him was horrible. And we do not stand for any police brutality. We do not stand for any racism. It is sin. Sin is in the heart of America. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And this is our time, church, to shine. This is our time. Be careful what you post on Facebook. You got to be light on Facebook. You have to be light on Instagram. You have to be light on Snapchat. This is our time to to stand up in the name of Jesus and proclaim that the only solution is Jesus Christ. This is your time to stand up and make a difference. Be part of the solution. Easy to be 
lack of a keyboard and criticize everything and criticize them. Nah, that's not our job. We're not here to criticize. We're here to be part of a solution. You've been chosen to be part of a solution. All of us were chosen. Understand that God chose you for his glory. You see the story, or you see the glory, but you don't know the story. All of you have a story. All of you, people that know you say, man, how, how did you do it? Because they know your story. They, they, seen the, and they, they see you happy and smiling and coming to church, and you've been through hell and back, and here you are having the audacity to come to church, talking about, thank you, God, you're so good. That don't make sense to the human mind. Going through hell and high water and have the audacity to come to church in the middle of a pandemic talking about, God, you've been so good. Only the spiritual people will understand that. The carnal mind can't understand that. But here you are. He desires to unfold his master plan in all of us. Number three, he called you. Look at your neighbor and tell him, he called you. You are his, you are his, you are his. He called you, he called you, you are his. Look at Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. You notice that throughout Scripture, God always has to keep reminding. Remember Joshua, don't fear, be strong, don't fear, be strong. The people of Israel, he got to keep reminding them. Sometimes, you know why could we forget? Sometimes we're so distracted by what's going on around us that we forget who, who we serve. Sometimes we're so focused on the problem, we forget to rehearse and recite the promises of God. You got to quit looking at your issues, at your problems. At, turn off Facebook. Turn off the news for quite a... Listen, take a week fast from social media, fast from the TV, and seek the face of God. You got to understand it doesn't matter what's going on out there. You got to get connected to the Holy Spirit. You got to co get connected to God in prayer and fasting and find out what is it, God, that you want me to do? What is it? that you're asking for me to do during this time during these dark times what is it you got to get connected to God we're so focused on what's going on and the least thing that we're doing is connecting with God and praying and fasting get connected with God he called you God call is over your life that's why you can't leave him because he's constantly calling you whispering whenever you feel discouraged listen all men of God and women of God in the Bible, they all felt discouraged some of the prophet he wanted to die he's like Lord take my life take my life Lord he was under a tree crying out to God take my life and the Lord sent an angel <laughs> we always get depressed all of us get depressed at one point or another all of us want to quit every person in here have wanted to quit Quit your business, your ministry, your marriage. All of you want to quit. No couple. I don't want no couple saying amen up in here. I don't want no trouble. He was there. But the angel of the Lord, he's, God, just take my life, kill me. The angel of the Lord came out of nowhere and said, yo, homie, get up. Eat that sandwich. Drink that water. You're just a little hungry. Sometimes you just need to eat. Sometimes you're just a little hungry. And you need to make yourself some mango or something. Make yourself some mofongo. Drink yourself whatever it is that you drink. And get on with your life. Sometimes you just need to rest. Eat, get up, and live out your God-given purpose. So God, he, he brought the angel. And sometimes God speaks to you through people. How many know that God uses people? Some of y'all are waiting for the angel. The angel ain't coming. I'm the angel. You're the angel. Right? We're, we're waiting for a sign. No, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm your sign right here, baby. This is it. You're going to have to do it with me. This is what the Lord is telling you to do. Get yourself pity butt up. Eat and keep on going. That's what the Lord says. Number four, he justified you. He justified you. You see, God has promised you greatness. 
Now this doesn't, no, I'm not in number four. I'm in number five. I'm in number five. There you go. Okay. Am I in number four or number four? I, I lost. Where am I? Number four? I'm still in number four? Okay, number four. Listen. Just because he foreknew you, he predestined you, he called, listen to me. He also takes into account that you're going to fail him. God is not surprised when you fail him. God is not surprised when you make mistakes. Everybody in this room makes mistakes. I make mistakes. All pastors, we all make mistakes. Here's the issue. Some learn from their mistakes. Some keep repeating them. You can't keep repeating the same mistake over and over. Now, you ain't learning nothing. You got to look at the mistake, receive correction. If you really love your brother and sister and you have a relationship with them, you will correct them in private. Correction is part of grace. It's part of love. You correct them. If they receive it, they're good. If they don't receive it, that's a problem. Now, that's a spirit of rebellion. And that's a whole different issue. But all of us are going to make mistakes. But that's what we have one another to, to hold us up, to encourage one. Why? God already knew you were going to mess up. He knew I was going to mess up. He takes that into account. Listen, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and for short of the glory of God. My last one, he glorified you. He glorified you. Listen, God gets the glory out of your situation. He gets the glory out when you allow yourself to leave a mark. God glorifies us through testing. Joseph, everybody knows the, the story of Joseph. He went through everything. He was sold by, almost killed by his brothers, sold by his brothers. He was locked up. He was accused of something he didn't do. He didn't even understand why he was going through this. And he was a young kid. Through, but through all of it, God was with him. Every step of the way, God's favor was with him. Listen, let me tell you, when you're truly called, you'll be going through hell and high water. And even through the most crucial, most painful moments, the favor of God shows up in your life. People see the favor of God. It's not something that you say. It's something that people see. They see, they're like, yo, there's something about this guy. I know he's been through hell and water, but there's something about this guy. Listen, when you stay faithful to God, no matter what you understand, God's favor begins to manifest in your life. Everybody notices. God glorifies us through testing. Through testing, look at the Apostle Paul. If you read the life of the Apostle Paul, man, I'm telling you, this man was no joke. There's a story in the Bible where he goes to preach in a hostile community. They beat him up. They drag him out the city, throw him out the gates. He's bleeding. The Bible says he's bleeding. He's beat up badly. The Bible says some of his disciples surrounded him, helped him up. And after they got him up, you know what he said? I'm going back. <laughs> I'm going back. Listen, that's the favor of God. That's the favor of God. He didn't say, man, let's skip this time. They don't want to hear the gospel. I'm out. That's, some of us would say that. We'd be like, man, forget them. Let them go to hell. You want to reject Jesus? Reject them. You're going to hell. That would have been our attitude. Not Paul. Paul said, I'm going back. Wow. You really got to be full of God's love to do something like that. Let us be like Paul. Let us follow the example that no matter what, we go out and we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ by all means necessary. Even if they insult you, you don't insult back. You go out there and you preach the gospel however you can. Listen, in order to leave a mark, you're going to be tested, church. You're going to be tested. You see, God glorifies us by sharpening us. By sharpening us. The purpose of the pencil, it's in its core. Everybody sees the outside. But you see, this pencil, some people might say, oh, it's ready. It's ready to do its purpose. It's not ready. And like this pencil, many of you are not ready. 
Some of you want to go ahead and just do whatever you want to do. Say, oh, God called me. Yes, God called you. But there's a preparation process. You see, the gift will take you places, but character will keep you there. This pencil, the purpose, it's in its core, but it ain't ready. It has to go through some sharpening. All of us have to go through a sharpening process. The reason we go through what we go through is God allows it. You want to know why? Because he wants to sharpen your character. He wants to sharpen some things that are in you, some, some issues that have been unleft, unmet issues in your heart from your past that you're bringing them in and God's saying, no, 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 you see, you don't understand, honey. Where I'm taking you, certain things in your attitudes can't go with you because if they do, they're going to mess up everything I planned for you. So God allows certain things to happen in our lives. Certain storms to come. You want to know why? Because storms, when the waves were going in, the boat, water begins to flush out. Certain things begin to float out. So God allows you to go to, through certain storms because he wants to float out, gush out, flush out certain things that are in your heart that can't go where you're going. Certain people can't go where you're going. That's why Jonah had to be kicked out. He couldn't go where they were going. Because of him, it would, because he had a different purpose. There's nothing wrong with certain people. It's just that they weren't called to go where you're going. And so God has to begin to, I hope this works. I didn't test it. That's the sound of process. That's the sound of process. That's the sound of God getting you ready. It hurts. It don't feel good. But I'm here to let you know that your process doesn't have to feel good in order to work for your good. Let me say that again. Your process doesn't have to feel good in order to work for your good. He's testing you. He's squeezing you. He's preparing you. It don't feel good. But God says... I'm not going to give you a test that you are not prepared for. The reason I'm taking you through this test is because when I created you, I designed you and created you for the purpose for which I'm preparing you for. And so the Holy Spirit looks at you. And you say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, Pastor, I'm ready. No, no, you're not. <laughs> pastor, come on, Pastor, give me a shot. Nah. <laughs> One pastor told me years ago, he said, Pastor, I'm ready, for, I'm ready for, for, for the pulpit. I'm ready for the pulpit. Give me a shot, Pastor. Let me preach, Pastor. He said, you want to preach? Uh, yeah, I'm ready, Pastor. You ready? I'm ready, Pastor. Good. Every street corner has a pulpit. Go preach. I, was like, I don't like you no more. But he was so right. Go preach. I believe it was Iyabila who said, the problem with many young people today is that if you don't teach them how to win souls and you just give them a pulpit, they're always going to go after the pulpit and not the souls. If you generally want a heart to preach to souls, start preaching to souls. Not the pulpit. It's the souls out there. This looks just about ready to do what it was created to do. Some of you are still here in the box. And some of you are not appreciating the process. And the reason it's taking you longer than others is because just like the people of Israel that kept complaining, 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 complaining. They didn't get it. We have an opportunity to get it. Some of you are in here and you're, you're saying, God, but, but when is it going to be my turn? I see everybody passing me. Everybody is doing their thing. God, when, when am I going to do it? When am I going to get to do this, to do that? God, I feel like I'm ready. But
but God knows best. It's just like a father and a child. When the child wants to do something that we know as adults, it's just crazy. They're like, no, 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 you can't do that. Why not, Poppy? Why not? Because you're going to hurt yourself. But in their limited thinking, they don't understand that. So we tell them, no, no. And we grab them and we protect them from doing it. Right now, some of you are in the box. Because that's exactly where the Holy Spirit wants you. But in due time, he's going to take you out the box. And then you're going to go through the process. Right now, some of you need to get used to that sound. Because it's what's preparing you for success. It's what's preparing you for a great marriage. It's what's preparing you for a great business, for a great ministry. It's what's preparing you. All things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So in conclusion, we are destined, we are called, we are justified, we are glorified simply because of the hands we're in. Simply because of the hands we're in. A pencil cannot write in of itself. It needs a hand. Whose hands are you in today? Whose hands are you in? This pencil cannot complete its purpose on its own. It needs a hand so it can be used. Are you allowing yourself to be used in the hands of the Holy Spirit? Because he desires to use you. Today, I want to encourage you. Are you willing to place your life in God's hands knowing he will give you a way out? As he said, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you except what's common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But you are tempted. He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Listen. Church, if you're going through a test, it's because God knows that you can handle it. And not only he knows you can handle it, he's prepared a way out. Meaning, he's prepared a timing. There's a timing for every test to end. It means that you will be prepared after that test for that phase in your life. So today... I want everyone's eyes closed, heads bowed. 